hello welcome back to IT security labs and as you know this is video number five in our free Grafana course so if you've been following along from video number one you're doing very well and um, in this video I'm going to show you the various ways that we can end up with graphs and that I've used Grafana and hopefully you can take it from this video and skip to videos that fit your needs I know I have about 12 or 13 videos in this series but your environment might be different. So I'm going to be showing you what I've been using Grafana for. Now that we have everything installed, you can go as you need. So as you can see, um, in our previous video, we had installed Grafana, InfluxDB, and Telegraph. We have not configured InfluxDB yet, which is why I think this video is very important, because in Grafana, we have what we call data sources. And you don't need InfluxDB for everything. If your lab or your environment has uh, Zabbix, for instance, or Nagios, or other databases like MySQL, you can just add those. So that's why I thought it's very important for this video to be right in the middle. What I'm seeing by data sources is we're getting information from our systems. And there are so many ways that we can get that information. One of the most popular one is to get information through Telegraph, which we just installed, and Telegraph will send that information to InfluxDB, then InfluxDB can be added to Grafana, like what you can see. Once you get information from Telegraph to InfluxDB to Grafana, you can literally create graphs like this bandwidth usage graphs. This graph can show you uh, what time my internet started getting used and it also uh, my bandwidth usage pretty much so this is my throughput I do have videos on my channel on how to create this graph this is just using SNM, SNMP then um, you can use the same to make this graph as well same information this is coming from my Meraki information and if you go to my channel I do have a video that shows you how to get uh, SNMP data into your Grafana instance. So there are three ways that I've been using Grafana, or maybe four. That's what I want to focus on today. Those three ways are I'm using Zabbix. It's amazing. Um, this is my Zabbix dashboard. It's not looking great right now. Um, I have more work to do, but as you can see, I'm able to see, you know, the time. <laughs> I'm able to see the cluster that is connected to. This is a vSphere cluster that is connected to Zabbix. Um, you can use Zabbix, and Zabbix can be added as a data source. As you can see right here. Just in case you haven't noticed, for full disclosure, I have two Grafana instances running. I have one Grafana instance that is running, that you're looking at right now. This is running in Docker, and I have a video on my channel on how to install the whole thing in 10 minutes. Docker is for testing. This series is for production environment or someone who wants to do something production-like. And as you can see, this IP is 51. If you go to my production one, it's 54. Just want to make sure that I put it out there. And I have Zabbix in both, so Zabbix is pretty easy to configure. But uh, what I like about Zabbix is its data sources. If you have used Zabbix before, you can easily add Zabbix as a data source. It's pretty straightforward. I have a video to show you how to do that. If you look on my channel again, I might have it in the uh, description below. From Zabbix, uh, this is the kind of information that you get. I'm getting my VMware v ESXi information. It says Cloud Data Center 1. And if you come here, this is the Cloud Data Center 1. And my Zabbix environment is also getting my when traffic and I actually had to go in here and configure this myself because I wanted to make sure that it's, it looks better than my current when traffic is and as you can see through SNMP I'm getting better information and a better looking graph than this one that you might see from my uh, vSphere so this is my vSphere overview graph and the WAN traffic graph that I'm talking about is this compared to the one that I got from Zabbix. And this is the same graph. So you're looking at this one from my Zabbix data compared to 
this one that I manually configured by myself. So there is a big difference in how the same information right here is presented right here. This one, I think, looks better, but that's just me. So you can add Zabbix, and that's a different data source. So if you want to go that route, skip other videos, just find a video on my channel that talks about configuring Zabbix as a data source, if you already have Zabbix. Or let me know in the comments if you would like to see my Zabbix installation. It will still get the job done, but I believe other people have done better videos. And then, um, in addition to Zabbix, you can actually come here and use this word ping. My use case now is I have a website. I like things to be practical. This is my website that I have out, out there called africancoupons.com. You can look it up. I wanted to monitor my uptime for my DNS, my ping, and this is in real time. This app requires you to pay the uh, word ping, but since I'm using it for my own uh, fun website, africancoupons.com, I just, uh, I'm okay with the probes that it has. I can configure alerts here to make sure that when my website goes down or if it's not responding to DNS queries, I get alerts. That's something I can do and this is why I like to use Grafana, whether it's in at home or in a home lab or somewhere, it's because it's practical. So if you have a website for your employer or your own uh, blog that you have out there, I also have a blog called lahilabs.com and I can use word ping to monitor my blog as well because I'm paying money for this blog. I'd like to know when it's up in real time. So these are some of the use cases for Grafana, whether it's in your lab or at home. I even added Cloudflare here, which I thought was amazing. As you can see, I still have some work to do, but Cloudflare is what I use for my, uh, so I don't get this not secure thing. For my certificates, for my websites, it's free and it's amazing. So there are so many use cases that you can use uh, Grafana for dashboards. And these are some of the examples that I was just showing you. But as you can see, I even have rain tank events here, InfluxDB being the biggest one. With InfluxDB, which is why you probably want to keep configuring InfluxDB, and you can go to video number six next, is you can get information from Telegraph straight into InfluxDB, and InfluxDB will display it in your dashboards. So what you're looking at right now in my graphs, all this information is coming, most of it, like my Dell PowerEdge power usage is definitely coming from InfluxDB. As you can see, if I go here and do an edit, data source is InfluxDB. So if you keep with this course, if you keep watching these videos, I'll be showing you exactly how to create your Dell PowerEdge power usage. You can search on my channel if you want to skip the whole series and go straight to something that you like. But I do show you how to do it and if you cannot follow if you have any questions I try by all means to respond to people right away and the reason for this video it was just to show you that from here now that we have Grafana installed in your lab you can go ahead and narrow it down to your needs and for me it was adding my Zabbix server there my uh, word ping there and also my uh, Cloudflare and I also played with uh, other things so if you want to continue and uh, just follow the series, you can go ahead. I don't mind your views. Otherwise, narrow it down, find some videos in the series that go straight to what you need. If you go to video number six, I will show you how to add InfluxDB. If you go to video number seven, I'll show you how to actually um, finish the edition of uh, InfluxDB seven and eight. Then on video number nine, we're just going to be collecting Windows metrics because uh, that's something that we need to do right away. Then on Windows number 10, I'll show you how to add a Linux matrix. On video number 11, it's vSphere. I have other videos on my uh, channel that will show you that as well. But uh, if you go to video number 12, I'll show you how to configure SNMP so you can end up with uh, a lot of other graphs that I have here. So if you stay with me on my channel, you'll be able to configure all these and you have these graphs. But again, if you have any questions, let me know. Again, remember to subscribe and like my videos. I really appreciate those people who do. It keeps me motivated to keep making them. It takes time, but 
I like to share this knowledge and if you like and subscribe, I'll keep them coming. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next videos.